So let's start with saponins and dive in a little more into details regarding the science here. There are multiple studies done in animal models and in cell culture, which pretty clearly show that saponins, these compounds, again, remember these are triterpene glycosides, which is just a fancy word for a fancy chemical molecule that occur in things like oats, quinoa, soybeans, et cetera. But these chemicals are very problematic for the gut. These are damaging to the gut. And that's really why they are designed. That's exactly that's exactly what they're meant to do. Saponins are meant to damage the gut. So there are studies like this one. The title is The Influence of Saponins on Gut Permeability and Active Nutrient Transport in Vitro. That's in the test tube. So the authors of this study looked at four saponins and when the cell culture, which was um, meant to mimic the human gut, was exposed to these saponins, there were clear increases in transport across the membrane, which is essentially the equivalent of leaky gut, damage to the human gut. These results indicate that some saponins readily increase the permeability of the small intestinal mucosal cells, thereby inhibiting active nutrient transport and facilitating the uptake of materials to which the gut would normally be impermeable. Well, that is exactly <laughs> what leaky gut is. And so I think that there are many studies like this showing that saponins are a problem for the gut, for humans especially. Here's another study which is talking about reducing the damage of the quinoa saponins on human gastric mucosa cells by a heating process. Now, unfortunately, if you read the study, they weren't able to completely abrogate or remove the damage to the human gut, the human gastric mucosal cells, by heating them. Saponins are very resistant to degrad degradation by heating. And we know that these quinoa saponins are problematic for the human gut. So I don't understand, even just pausing here, how anyone can really believe that quinoa is benign for humans. I've done previous uh, posts on quinoa and shared my own anecdotes. Quinoa is not very easy to degrade or to digest, which is essentially the point of all these defense chemicals on these grains. And I know this is a podcast about oats, but it overlaps to quinoa. And the idea is that if you eat quinoa, unless you chew the heck out of that, you're gonna see that quinoa in your poop, meaning the quinoa has done essentially nothing for you. You've got no nutrients. All of those amino acids you think are beneficial in quinoa are not being absorbed because the point of that quinoa, that quinoa is a seed. <laughs> that seed wants to live. And the whole point of that quinoa is to move through your gut and go out in your poop in a nice warm pile of fertilizer to grow somewhere else. So yes, you can sprout it. That will decrease some of the problems, but the saponins are not degraded by heat they're still going to be there even if you sprout the grain. So people will say, what if I sprout the oats? What if I ferment the oats? Well, fermentation of the oats will help with phytic acid somewhat, but it won't help with the saponins and heating won't help with the saponins from oats or quinoa. So you're just stuck with these defense chemicals. These defense chemicals also occur in things like potatoes, solanine is a type of saponin. So these are prevalent in the plant kingdom and understanding that these are damaging for your gut. And I believe that most human illness begins in the gut. There are nutrient deficiencies. There are things like seed oils, which accumulate in our cell membranes. These cause metabolic harm. But I think most of the problems with plant foods and these chemicals that they have, these defense chemicals, are on the human gut. They irritate the human gut. They cause activation of the immune system. They may even bind the TLR4 or TLR5 receptors, toll-like receptors in the gut, leading to inflammation, cascades, downstream, increasing things like cortisol, serotonin, or estrogen, which are negative in the human body. But regardless, there's pretty solid evidence that saponins are damaging to the human gut and that cooking doesn't degrade these compounds. How much of these are in oats? Articles like this, triterpenoid saponins in oat bran and their levels in commercial oat products. Talk to us about these levels. You can see here the total levels of 13 triterpenoid saponins varied from 1.7 to 18.2 micrograms per gram in 19 oat products in which oat bran and oatmeal had levers, levels higher than cold oat cereal. Among the 11 commercial oat bran samples, the average total levels of 13 triterpenoid saponins in the five sprouted oat samples are slightly higher than those in regular oat bran products. So even sprouted oats don't avoid saponins. And really there's not much of a way to avoid these saponins in your oats other than placing the oats where they belong, which I believe is in the trash can. You decide. And I love that in this study, the first line they say, oats are commonly consumed as whole grains, generally considered as a healthy food. However, the bioactive compounds in oats have not been fully investigated. <laughs> yeah, this happens so often that we eat a lot of foods, especially plant foods as humans, that we're told are health foods, but 
many of the bioactive compounds in there have not been fully examined and are probably quite problematic for humans. In terms of animal research, there are many studies like this one, the biological actions of saponins in the animal systems are review. And in this study, you can see that these compounds can thus affect animals in a host of different ways, both positively and negatively. They are known to affect the reproductive systems of animals negatively. It says here, extensive research has been carried out into the membrane permeability, immunostimulant, hypocholesterolemic, I don't think that's a good thing, anti-carcinogenic properties of saponins, and they have been found to significantly affect growth, feed intake, and reproduction in animals. These structurally diverse compounds have also been observed to kill protozoans and mollusks, to be antioxidants, to impair digestion of protein, and the uptakes of vitamins and minerals in the gut, to cause hypoglycemia, which is not a good thing because glucose is a nutrient, and to act as antifungal and antiviral agents. So these saponins do many things, but they do many negative things along the way. And I think that taken in sum, the majority of the research suggests that these compounds are not beneficial for humans. Anti-nutrients, preventing digestion, worsening reproduction in animal models is not a good thing to be doing. There are many other things we can do which can give us beneficial effects that are talked about in these studies. And if you've heard any of my other podcasts, you know that I don't really worry about cholesterol the way that other people worry about cholesterol. That's a separate podcast. Oat saponins specifically have been studied to affect digestion of carbohydrates negatively. And studies like this suggest that the avencocides A and B, which are the two major saponins present in oats, may inhibit the digestion of lactose, leading to lactose intolerance. Uh, they could in impair lactase, which is not a good thing. I have talked about milk and raw milk a lot. I think it's a quite healthy thing for humans. And the idea that they could impair lactose, lactase enzyme and lead to lactose intolerance is another reason. They're probably not great. And yet another study, the effect of saponins and glycoalkaloids on the permeability and viability of mammalian intestinal cells and on the integrity of tissue preparations in vitro. The story is the same, not good for the gut, causing inflammation, causing death of the intestinal cells and causing leakiness to the cells. That is increased electrical potential across the cells and impairment of active transport, meaning that the gut wants to take in certain things, which are nutrients, and it stops doing that. It allows many things across, which can be problematic, either immunogenic, bacterial fragments, all sorts of things which can, which can trigger the immune system. So it doesn't look like a good thing for the human gut or any of the cell culture models studied. An increase in the apparent permeability of the brush border was observed at sublethal concentrations of the compound. This may have important implications with respect to enhanced uptake of macromolecules such as allergens, whose passage through the epithelium is normally somewhat restricted. These studies consistently describe the phenomenon that we think of as leaky gut, which is the idea that if you damage the gut lining, allergenic compounds, whether it's fragments of bacterial cell walls, proteins, food molecules can move across the epithelium of your gut be seen by the immune system, which, re which resides predominantly in the lamina propria on the human side of the gut and trigger immunity, which is essentially what I believe and what many people believe to be the genesis, the beginnings of autoimmunity in humans. So in summary, saponins, soapy molecules on oats, on quinoa, on soybeans, on many grains in general, on legumes, inhibiting digestive enzymes, causing inflammation in the gut, causing leaky gut, inhibiting lactase, inhibiting fat metabolism, and even the digestion of proteins, and being a very negative force, things that cannot be washed off very easily, things that cannot be degraded with heating or cooking. So with everything else aside, I think that this is a major reason not to eat oats in your life, 